I want to talk about something that I think is really important, and that is the dilemma of lack of time. Welcome to the Millionaire Success Habits Podcast. All success starts right here. So many people will say to me, Dean, got your strategies. They looked great. I just don't have the time. Now, I want to break time down today. I think there's a physical time that, you know, I don't have the hours in a day or I need to cut something out so I can find that time. And let's talk about that maybe next month or down the road or maybe next week. But right now, I want to talk about something that I call emotional time. Where you live emotionally that's robbing you from the life you want, from making money in real estate or just losing weight or having a better relationship or living an abundant life. There's these emotional times, these, this emotional time stealer that you might not be aware of. And what really brought it to light to me in the last couple of weeks is I just got done reading the book, The Shack. I don't know if you read it. I'm giving this endorsement. I'm not making anything off that book. Oh my God, that book was unbelievable. I'd recommend it to anybody, whether you believe in God or you don't. If you're spiritual, you're religious, if you're Jewish, if you're Christian, if you're Buddhist, it doesn't matter. You need to read this book. It's so unbelievable. And there was one part in my life, something really tragic happened in the book in the beginning, the worst thing that could possibly happen to a parent. And later on, there's a conversation where this guy is asked to forgive. And, and the definition of why to forgive was so magnificent that I, can only, I would only ruin it by trying to share it with you other than saying, Read the book. It's unbelievable. I listened to it. Loved listening to it. It was good audio. Okay. So, but it really sparked something I wanted to share with you guys about this emotional time stealer. And what that is, is what are the things that are robbing you from the life you desire that you don't even realize it? And I want to write these down. I wrote down emotional time stealer. So here's what we're going to do today. One, not forgiving. You're probably thinking, how could my life be better by forgiving people that have taken advantage of me or hurt me or robbed money or cheated on me or stolen from me or just been mean to me? How can I forgive them? What you don't understand is you not forgiving. And it really hit me hard in this book. This, this, this is something that hit me years ago with a story with my stepdad, but then it really fine-tuned it with this book is anybody that we're not forgiving, we're holding it. It's like, think about this emotional time that we have in our, in our bodies, this time to be happy, this time to be abundant, this time to look for a new future, or be happier, more joyful, playful, you know, I, all those things. But we have a bucket inside of us of these things that we don't realize could hold us back. And, and once somebody does something to us, even their sorry doesn't take it away until we forgive. So I would urge you this week to see who you haven't forgiven. And see if you can find a way. And if you're finding it hard to forgive because it's something really bad, I would urge you to read that book and power through it and get it done and find a way to just let that go. Let that forgiveness go and get that emotional time back. Second, another big one is blaming others. How many people do you know in your life that the reason things aren't working for them is because there's someone that did something? There's someone that they were going to start a business. They took advantage of them. There's a boss that's holding you back. There's a coworker who does things that hurt. There's a wife or a husband that's just negative. There's a child that's going through tough times. There's parents. You know, we, we're in this society now where everything's our parents' fault, right? Who do you blame? I would find a way to look at your past as... I've said this before, look at your past, it's like you're in your house and your house is catching on fire and you got a suitcase, a big suitcase, and you could fill up the suitcase and you could fill up everything in it that means stuff to you and let everything burn. That's, that's what we need to do with our past. We need to, and blaming people, we need to pack up the stuff that empowers us from our past, the stuff we learned from, the things that's research and development, bring it into our present and let all the other stuff burn. It doesn't serve you to blame others. And in most cases, maybe you brought that on without realizing, and if you had nothing to do with it, that's okay. Then that's that person's problem, not yours. But the more we blame, the more we have an excuse, the less we thrive. Third, I wanna talk about, and this is a broad category, but negative thoughts. Now this is one where you're like, wow, that's a big bucket. But what I want you to try to think about this week is, 
if your program, because of the negative news, the media, the way you're brought up, friends in your life, coworkers, where it's always the glass is half empty, it's gonna go wrong. You're thinking through a scarcity mindset, through not through abundance. If you're having those scarcity thoughts that we're running out of resources, there's no entrepreneurs left, there's no good real estate deals left, there's no good diet pills, there's no good health, the, 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 you know, all these things that are gonna kill us and, and take from us and rob from us, if you're thinking that way first, it's crippling you. It's robbing your emotional time and taking away the, the, the space in your heart, in your soul to achieve the abundance and the life that you deserve and you desire. And I know, I, I know in so many cases I'll share this and I'll go, yeah, but you don't know what I'm going through. No, I don't. I don't know what you're going through, but I know people who have gone through really difficult times, including myself, and everybody has their own level of crap. But what you think about is what you become. So I'd ask you to please pay attention to what your thoughts are. And if they're going towards what's wrong, see if you could just make a little adjustment and say, what can I find right here? I'll give you a story. Last night, this is literally last night, I'm, I'm, I'm working on about an hour's sleep right now. Because last night, uh, I went to bed about 10 o'clock. 11.30, I got woken up. I heard something outside, it woke me up. And I'm really good at falling asleep. I'm not good at falling back to sleep. About 12 o'clock, my daughter comes in the room with a nightmare and she's scared and she doesn't do this a lot. So I said, oh, honey, I'm sorry. And I walked her downstairs and, and I put her to bed, tucked her in. And all of a sudden, about an hour later, I hadn't fallen back to sleep yet. She came back up. The dream came back. I said, I'm sorry, babe, jump in bed with me. And she's a tosser and turner and all this kind of stuff. So she's going tossing and turning and flipping around. And so finally at like two o'clock, I said, you know, I can't do this. I tucked her in fluffed her up. I went down and jumped in her bed. I'm in her bed and about three o'clock, I hear my son literally crying, hysterical. So I get up and I go in his room, his light's on and he's changing. My son peed his bed, he's six years old. He hasn't done it in four years. And he was so embarrassed and so sad. He was crying hysterical. I can't believe I did this, dad. And so, and I'm like, bud, no big deal. I've done it. And we, we had this great dialogue. I helped him change, I changed his sheets tucked him back in bed and literally tried to go to sleep and I never did. So I slept about an hour. But I thought about it this morning, instead of waking up, and I'm just giving you an example, and I wanna, when I share this with you, I, I want you to know something. I'm not, oh, I haven't always been perfect at this and I'm not perfect at it now. It's a work in progress. But I made a decision this morning. Yes, I'm tired. I could have been, I can't believe my daughter had a nightmare that my son peed the bed and the noise outside woke me up. And I got up and I said, I am so grateful and so blessed that I was there for my daughter when she was scared and I comforted her and she went back to sleep and had an amazing night's sleep. And what if that didn't happen? I wouldn't have went downstairs to hear my son crying and he was so sad and I was there to comfort him and make it no big deal. And I, I really, I want the truth, I prayed and I said, thank you so much for last night. I was, I was where I was exactly where I was supposed to be. Well, I, could, I, could have, I could have been pissed, I'm tired right now. That's why I'm talking a little slower than normal. But I'm blessed that all of that happened and that's the way I choose to look at it. And lastly, talking about other people. Talking about others. Now, sorry, I spell horrible, but God, that's, it's, it's so prevalent in today's society and watching all these reality shows that everybody's just talking and this one's fat, this one's skinny, this one's old, this one's young, this one's got wrinkles or plastic surgery. And then in regular life, you're talking. Here's the thing. Try to go a week and just pay attention to the people talking about others. Small people talk about other people. You know, what's that saying? Small people talk about other people. Normal people talk about things. You know, I, I forget the quote. I'm sorry. You probably know it. You should look it up and post it underneath. But great people talk about the future, talk about how to change, how to evolve right? They talk about the now. Be, be careful getting sucked into that because so many people do it. So that's my, that's my sharing with you this week. Um, find the emotional time stealers in your life and empty that bin because so many times, even if you have the physical time, if you're living in here, the physical time that's open won't seem like you can do anything with it because you're just drugged down with these anchors. Let the past burn. Live in the present. Be aware of these. And let's just make this an incredible year working together. I'm Dean Graziosi. Thanks for watching. If you'd love to see a special in-depth training, two-hour training with my dear friend Tony Robbins and I on something that could blow your mind, how you could share what you know, share your impact, share your strategy, share your uh, uh, knowledge, share your skills, 
make an impact on other people and actually get paid to do it. It's unlike anything you could ever imagine. In fact, just go to deanstraining.com. That's deanstraining.com. Register for the free two-hour training. It will blow your mind. And join me here week after week as I share the lessons to show you how to reach that next level of life. What's up, what's up? Hey, before you go, you need to watch these next few videos. They're absolute game changers. Hurry up and click right over here and watch them, and I'll see you there.